we are here at the 20th, uh, 20th, mind you, Theological Conference in Atlanta, uh, having an exciting time. And, Yoko, you spoke earlier today, and I just enjoyed it tremendously. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for uh, meeting with us and uh, having this opportunity for our viewers uh, to be able to get to know you a little bit better. It was an honor, thank you. Uh, indeed. So are you originally from South Africa? That's home? Yep. Born and bred South African. All right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so at Middleburg, yeah. uh, what area of South Africa is that in? Okay. That would be the uh, one of the eastern provinces uh, called Mpumalanga. That's an hour and a half drive east from from Johannesburg. I've always heard it's a beautiful country. Beautiful. And very, very if you say so yourself, it is yeah. very nice. <laughs> well, they, uh, uh, well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, give us a, a little bit of your history and your background. What brought you to, to here today? Yeah. How did you? Well, it goes a long way. Uh, as you said, I was born in South Africa, small town, just um, an hour's drive north from where I'm staying now, mm. a town called Groblesdal. Mm. It uh, used to be in Afrikaans. Afrikaans speaking, predominantly Afrikaans speaking town. I moved to a neighboring town called Marble Hall, but um, yeah, we grew up in the Dutch Reformed Church. Okay, Dutch Reformed. That's okay. it. There are three sister churches called Dutch Reformed Churches. Um, since 19, 1988, there were four because there was a there was a schism in one of those churches. Ah, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, a, a whole family from both my mother's and my father's ancestry were Dutch Reformed churchgoers. Mm. So that's my background. Um, we attend a church either, well, very often, as often as we could. Um, as I shared with you in my talk, my mother was the one teaching us about what the Bible taught, mm -hmm. the way she understood it. So from a very young age I learned about Jesus and God and heaven mm -hmm. and hell. So yeah, this, from a very, very young age Mom told us about the Bible. Let me ask you, uh, yeah. the uh, for the benefit of our viewers that may not be familiar, now you're, you're saying Dutch Reformed, is that sort of like a part of the larger Reformed church movement? Yeah. Uh, okay. Sort of uh, rather Calvinistic in Calvinistic, theology and so yeah. yeah. Predominantly okay. Calvinistic, yeah. Okay, I Also see. predestination, all that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you're, but you got most of your early uh, Bible instruction uh, and understanding uh, through your mom. That's true. That's, That's true. And also, obviously, from, from attending Sunday school. I did not particularly enjoy Sunday school. Hmm. In fact, when I was very young, I did not really like going to church. Hmm. I nevertheless had an understanding of God, an appreciation of God. I, was, I, I had a few theological dilemmas, if you could call it that, if I have the arrogance of calling it that since I was so young. Hmm. But I had an issue with suffering, for instance. Mm. I did not know how a loving God could allow suffering. Mm. I, was, mm. I was too little to figure that out myself. Yeah. But I would, I would find myself thinking about what Jesus would be doing right now, how to speak to Jesus, um, you know, how he would feel about, about suffering, human suffering, mm. suffering of animals. I loved the animal and the plant kingdom. Oh, yes, yes. They taught me about, about God. I've always been fascinating, mm. fa fascinated by, by nature. <laughs> I was very, very young thinking about all these things. Eventually, I felt the necessity and the desire to know God better. Mm. Entering my adolescent years, my, my teenage years, but I experienced the need for spiritual things. Obviously, started to immerse myself more and more into spiritual things. Not really understand the Bible properly. Um, loving to, I used to love reading the Bible. I remember going to hostel, and every every night I would read the Bible because that would be so comforting to me. Mm. The Bible was a a book that comforted me so much, especially, like I said, my my teenage years. I loved. Then then was the time when I when I started to experience God more, when I wanted more of Him in my life. Yeah. Did you uh, then continue in the reform uh, Dutch movement? I I encountered a few I encountered a few problems with their their theology. Mm. The the major one of those was the Trinity. Ah, okay. I could never believe in the Trinity. I see. Even with my limited knowledge of the Bible, I couldn't arrive from just reading scripture. I couldn't arrive at the Trinity. 
as I also shared with you in my talk, the Sunday school paper that we had to write after studying the Heidelberg's Catechism. Mm. And um, we were asked to write down the definition of the Trinity. I wrote it down, and after behind or, or just after my answer, I just wrote down, although I do not believe in it, in, bra <laughs> okay. in brackets. So you, you, gave a, uh, you, exp you gave a definition or an explanation of the Trinity, but then... My conscience could, <laughs> couldn't, didn't allow me, or couldn't allow me to, to leave it just at that, because I did not settle for that. I, I wasn't convinced that that was what the Bible really teaches. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah. So when I was, I was very young, 13, 14, my parents divorced, and my mom started to study with Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm, mm -hmm. At that time, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really interested in what they had to teach until a while later when we went on holiday with a family that were, who were Jehovah's Witnesses, mm -hmm. personal friends or family friends of ours. I asked a couple of questions and I knew they, 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 they told me the truth. Mm -hmm. They told me the truth about the one God, mm -hmm. that He has a personal name, mm -hmm that Jesus is not God, but God's Son. Mm -hmm. Everything I had expected truth to teach me, they taught me. Wow. Okay. But being so overwhelmed by all these biblical truths, this is, this is no other truth, these are no other truths than biblical truths. Mm -hmm. Th these truths do, do not belong to any denomination, to any church. These are biblical. But being so overwhelmed by them, unfortunately, I also accepted things that I now believe are not taught in the Bible. They expected us to believe was to accept the organization, the Watchtower organization as God's mouthpiece here on earth. I see. Mm -hmm. I was fascinated by, by, by prophecy, but I didn't know that Jehovah's Witnesses had a very u unique way of interpreting prophecy. Mm. I never knew that they had doctrinal flip-flops when it came to prophecy. Oh, that okay. I only later discovered. I but obviously those were the things they would never share with me. Mm -hmm. Someone who was just newly interested in what they had to teach. Sure. So in no time I became an ardent Bible student, a, a, a very zealous Bible student. I was a good, very good Bible student mm. also. When I, when, when, we, when I was 18, I got baptized, mm -hmm. as well as my younger brother and my, my mother. Mm -hmm. I remember the 1st of August, 1999, was the prayer in which I dedicated my life to, to God. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, in personal prayer, I, I was never concerned over the organization. I couldn't, for instance, say, in prayer, I dedicated my life to organization. Never, never. I don't know why. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Other witnesses do, or apparently they. Well, they, it becomes manifest when you hear how they how they pray. But I appreciated the organization. Yeah, that was good. But I loved the biblical truths more, mm -hmm. and that was what what excited me. Wow. Yeah. So you moved then from a a base, if you will, in in you were growing up in development in the Dutch reform movement and a wonderful mother of faith who was yeah. uh, a very helpful. Uh, and eventually, uh, but had difficulty. You had difficulties even then uh, with uh, particularly the, the notion of the Trinity, the idea of the Trinity being God that, as, a, as a God. Um, but, uh, and then you found uh, that uh, through the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, there seemed to be uh, some answers to some of those problems. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you were appreciative of that, I think, if I'm Most picking certainly. up on that. Um, back in those days, I, we, need instruct, we needed structure mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad had just been divorced. Mm -hmm. it was, uh, it was, it, those were very traumatic times. I remember my elder sister telling me, we were young, and she would tell me, you know what, Yaku, you know why I would believe the things you taught, the, the, the things you learned from what Jehovah's Witnesses taught you? She said, you turned around from being an aggressive, frustrated young man to being so calm. Wow, that's nice. Yeah. And that is true, because mm -hmm. I felt 
a connection with God again. Mm -hmm. The the whole the whole issue of Trinity wasn't wasn't hanging over my head all the time. Mm -hmm. I got answers to to really troubling questions, yeah. and those were the most important answers. Obviously, obviously, from a JW point of view, that was not enough. Mm -hmm. Right. Believing the truth, unfortunately, is not enough to them. I see. You need the rest. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, some uh, some good things came, particularly with the understanding that God is just one individual. Exactly. They, they did understand yeah. that was that was nice. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and that uh, there is a future kingdom of God on the earth. On earth. That's exciting, isn't it? Wonderful. And they brought those some of those things to you. Yeah. That was great. Most certainly. Yeah. And I finally, I could finally read the Bible, could finally reason or argue around mm. certain passages. Right. Sometimes not really getting satisfactory answers to them, but at mm. least I was on the right track. Right. I could understand seventy percent of the Bible. If, right. if, if, if I can say you that. were getting there, I was getting yeah, there. That's right. And um, I could read the Bible from cover to cover. I was, I was contained. I could live out my faith. Mm -hmm. Right. Obviously, not without persecution. Yeah. No. Those weren't easy times. Yeah. Um, not only, well, fortunately, it provided structure, but not only was our family at that time broken up, in in, in essence, um, but we encountered persecution at, at school. Mm. I do not think that even the JW way of handling persecution would be the cor the correct thing. I think many of that person, or much of that persecution, is self-imposed. Mm. I think it's a it, well, it's a, it's a terrible thing to say, but it, it's true. Um, I think that the, the spirit of martyrdom is is too much. Mm, mm. We, sh we we shouldn't be so apologetic, so so weak, so seeking for persecution, and then just justify them by saying, "Oh, okay. I'm a, a, well, that's proof of being in the true religion." I see. So, so in in a way, we might almost welcome or seek persecution yeah, because it's, it, it's self-imposed. Yeah. But, but that's not such a great idea. No, <laughs> that's certainly right. not. Not and a scriptural idea. Many really. other things yeah. we, had to, we had to eventually follow, I'm convinced now it's abnormal. I mean, mm -hmm. to, pre to, to, to prevent youngsters from engaging in physical sports, for mm -hmm. instance, that's unnatural and that is exactly what they, what they encourage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, under the excuse, we do not want to incite each other to, to competition. Well, what eventually happens is, you know, we grow up, we turn 21, we eventually start playing, for instance, squash or rugby with other fellow witnesses. Mm -hmm. And then we cannot handle losing because we've never learned mm. how to lose. Wow. No, sp wow. no, no, no sportsman's spirit was ever learned. Wow. So there's, there's disadvantages in that oh, sense most, of isolation. Most, and, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. The other thing that inevitably con um, developed was our cutting off relationships with other family members and friends. Ah, yes. Mm. Now that's not directly directly done. It, it's more subtly done. Mm -hmm. For instance, a Watchtower study might say, for instance, that you know, anyone not worshipping Jehovah is a potential enemy of Jehovah. Mm -hmm. We do not want to be friends with enemies of Jehovah, do we? Mm -hmm. Obviously, someone who's zealous for the truth would, would swallow that hook, line, and sinker mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. apply that or even overextend that teaching's application. Mm -hmm. So many of our family members got alienated from us, or we got alienated from them. I lost many friends. Wow, yeah. I could, even be, uh, I could only befriend JW youngsters. I see. And to be honest with you, many JW youngsters were not the best of friends. Mm -hmm. We're not the best of Christians you would you would want to be friend. But well what what, what other what other frame of reference mm -hmm. did I have? I could I wanted to be obedient. I wanted to mm -hmm. be pleasing to God. I was I was taught that this was the mouthpiece of God and they were appointed in nineteen eighteen to be God's mouthpiece. You better show your loyalty. Ah, yes, type thing. Yes, of course. And every good Christian wants to demonstrate loyalty. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I'm sensing correctly, and don't let me in any sure. way misrepresent your feelings or what you're saying, but sure. I don't sense that you have any kind of anger, frustration, bitterness, or no. 
anything toward uh, the folks in uh, that past in those in those areas. Uh, and I sense that you have uh, respect and honor toward yeah. all of those folks. Uh, with that in mind, you did see and find in your own life some problems related to uh, the way in which um, you were conducting life and, yeah. and faith, uh, though you found some truths that you could certainly latch on to. Uh, let me ask you this then. Uh, not really breaking relationship with the, the JWs uh, for, for reasons of anger, frustration, or bitterness, what did bring you to make the changes that you made? And many times, being a JW, I would I would think over prophecy, or I would think over certain arguments they put forth in various publications. And many times, the argue, those arguments just didn't didn't add up. Mm -hmm. I realized that someone bright enough could say this, and I wouldn't have an an, an answer mm -hmm. to that objection. I was very aware of those, such as the, the prophecies, the 1914 thing. There were a few weaknesses in the 144,000 reasoning. I mean, why interpret, interpret the race of Revelation, all the other numbers symbolically, but stick to the, the literalness of that number? <laughs> yes, I see. Okay. Immediately surrounding that verse is what they interpret to be the symbolic tribes of Israel, the mm. symbolic lamb, mm. the symbolic Mount Zion, but the literal 144,000. Interesting. Yeah. Seemed, seemed rather inconsistent then. In, certainly, in certainly. Yeah. I was also aware of inconsistencies in, or, or in, in um, should I rather say, irregularities in other congregations. But mm. my uh, the congregation I used to attend was a mature congregation, elderly people there. Mm. So, there were no typical issues in mm. that in that congregation. Mm. But I remember one morning when an elder gave me the organization's guidelines on how to handle child molestation. Mm. And I was a very strong witness. You need you need to understand that I was I had already been appointed a ministerial servant. Uh, well, and it would seem to me that you were quite astute, well, well aware of all the teachings and instructions yeah. and, and so on, Bible understanding of the, of the witnesses. I was, I was very privileged because I had an elder that, that taught me many things, wow. not yeah. only of scripture but also how to conduct yourself in, in, in difficult situations, mm. in public speaking, sure. in, 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 in public ministry, you know, it, it, right. evangelizing, all that. And he also taught me organizational procedure. And I remember one day reading those, those guidelines and I was horrified tell you the least. I was, I was scared over the feelings that came up in me, mm. especially the two witness rule. Mm. What that two witness rule means is unless there are two witnesses to one crime, mm. the one, per, the, the perpetrator of that, that crime cannot be disciplined. Mm. Mm. And that was a problem to me because who ever molests a child uh, in front yeah. of someone else? Mm. Saying, but you know what, if another child comes with the same accusation, then we can take action. Well, that is not, that is not the second witness to the same crime. And that is apparently the biblical uh, norm they're following. I see. Mm -hmm. So they could bend it in one instance, but in another, they couldn't. Wow. Okay. But it was as if I filed that whole thing. And I moved to another congregation, befriended a few witnesses there. But I stood out as different again. And the more I befriended several elders and, and several ministerial servants, I realized that there were some serious problems in, in that congregation. Mm, mm. And um, among other things were Im immorality, mm, prostitution, and even an accus or, or, or suspicion of child molestation, wow. clear signs of child molestation. Wow. Well, I opened a whole can of worms. You must appreciate that this was devastating to me. 
Wow. Having gone through all those experiences and seeing a system flawed to the core. Mm -hmm. It was it was very, very traumatic to me. Let me understand for the benefit of our viewers, uh, you're not necessarily saying that you were the victim of these things. No, 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 no. But you came to understand that these things were happening or apparently Certainly. were happening. Certainly, Certainly. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So when I started to uncover some of these things, I started to bring these things to light. The reaction was, was devastating to me in that there was there was simply no action taken to wow. any other perpetrators. Nice. Mm. I wrote letters, and the initial the initial reaction was positive in that the traveling overseer would say, "Oh, this is serious. We need to take action." Mm. And after chatting with the elders, they would come back and say, "You know what? Somehow you need to make peace with it. There won't be any action taken." Wow. Okay. You see. I even went as far, I was as desperate as going as far as downloading the Elder's Manual. Now, the Elder's Manual is a book given to elders alone. Mm. Other witnesses do not have access to that mm. book because of very confidential procedures mm -hmm. and whatnot contained it. I went and downloaded that Elder's Manual from the internet. Mm. And I quoted in my letters to, to the organization where they were not following their own procedure. Wow, okay. And I remember the one final meeting I had with the elders. Going on my knees and praying to God. Praying to Jehovah saying, God Jehovah, I, you know I am also imperfect. But you are well aware of the danger many, many brothers and sisters are in with all these irregularities. I came to believe your truth and I also came to believe that this organization is your mouthpiece. Mm. I've got a crisis of conscience. And I went as far as saying, you know the truth. You know the truth of everything that happened here. If your organization is indeed guided by you and by your spirit, we know what should happen. These things need to be sorted out. Mm. I'm putting your organization to the test here. Mm. Mm. Needless to say, nothing was nothing was done. In fact, a year after this whole case, this very person, accused of child molestation and sexual harassment, and all that, was appointed an elder. Oh wow! In that in, in that in that congregation. Wow. So bad experiences, very similar to Ray Faircloth's over in England. I see. Sure. Mm. Yes, we know, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, wonderful fellow. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this then. Uh, you're saying not just what you felt like then were just some totally isolated problems, but that this represented systemic yeah. problems within during the that, JW. During that time, actually before that time, I felt it some, I felt some um, dissatisfaction with with, with all the things I, I, I learned from the Watchtower, I felt that everything was repetitive. It felt boring. In fact, one, one morning I told my mother, I said, forgive me for saying it, but I feel so bored. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new. There's, I feel it's the same old thing. Nothing to challenge you about here, is there? <laughs> no, there's, there's, I'm not being fed anymore. Ah, yes. And she told me, Yaku, I can see that. Oh. Yeah. So before that time, I started to read around on the internet, and I found different websites of dissenting Jehovah's Witnesses. Ah, okay. And um, and they were they they observed things things similar to what I came to observe. Not only not only procedural matters as what I've just described to you in the particular case of serious wrongdoing, but also in in prophecy in 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 approaching scripture. Mm -hmm. I came to be convinced that they were indeed uttering false prophecies. Their date setting was wow. wrong every time. Wow. Mm. It was wrong every time. 1799, 1874, 1914, 1925, 1975, mm. those were dates the brothers had to believe in as if it were the words of Jehovah. Mm. Well, Jehovah does not lie. Mm. 
And what applies to one applies to everyone else. When Jehovah says, if a prophet speaks in my name and it does not come true, do not listen to him and do not bother fearing that prophet either. L continuing listening to the, the organization, continuing fearing that organization as if it were God's mouthpiece would imply, would imply my disobedient, mm. d d my, my being disobedient to Deuteronomy 18. Mm, yes. Disobedient to Jehovah. See? So all these things I, I gradually came to be aware of. During this whole case that I was involved in, the whole can of worms I opened, I also came in contact with Barbara Anderson. You must have met Barbara Anderson. She was the lead researcher of the JW um, biography, if you call it that, history. It's a thick, thick book on the history of, of Jehovah's Witnesses. It's called Jehovah's Witnesses, Pro Proclaimers of God's Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And she uncovered serious irregularities. She said she discovered a, a cabinet in the archives of the Watchtower organization containing over 23,000 case, 23, cases of unresolved issues around child molestation. On my land, yeah. Wow. So obviously that was, that was a great catharsis for me to, to write my experiences to her, to, to explain to her what, what, how helpless I'm feeling and how distraught I am the disappointed I was exp mm. the disappointment I was experiencing and having nowhere to go so I stuck in there mm -hmm. I stuck in the whole thing for two years wow. battling the system mm. and eventually one elder after another several elders were on my side and I, I'm very thankful for that mm -hmm. but because I couldn't let go of this case or, or, or of these issues one elder after another obviously uh, protecting themselves because they were the minority of 11 five were, in, or were on my side mm -hmm. protecting their p positions one after the other backed off mm -hmm. one of them even even got into trouble because he should have he should have reported some of that serious wrongdoing mm -hmm. and he didn't and because it happened a while ago no action could be taken mm -hmm. anymore mm -hmm. and at one time, one threatened me. He said, um, you have a very bad spirit. You're very critical of Jehovah's organization. Very critical of the brothers. You're even accusing me that I was slandering your name. Mm. Well, that's slandering itself, and we're going to sort you out. Mm. Mm. Well, that was the last straw. So that was in 2009, April. Mm. Mm. That I finally decided that was it. There was nothing more left for me. Mm. Among uh, with the Jehovah's Witness organization, I couldn't I couldn't trust them anymore. I couldn't mm -hmm. trust their leaders anymore. Their 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 policies didn't add up. Mm -hmm. There was there was to many of their policies there were no scriptural basis. Not their blood policy. Not their child molestation policy. Not mm -hmm. their even their shunning policy mm. had real solid and valid scriptural basis. Mm -hmm. I couldn't go along with that anymore. Wow. Prior to leaving, I stopped altogether distributing watchtowers and awake, for instance. Mm -hmm. Awakes, for instance. Mm -hmm. I used to preach with, with my Bible. Mm -hmm. But funny enough, as soon as I discovered the child molestation issues and, and all these irregularities, I realized I'm preaching to people. Mm -hmm. But all I can tell them, all I can teach them, is the good news of God's kingdom. I cannot, I cannot show them the way into into the Jehovah's Witness organization. Wow. I couldn't. Now, let me, let me say this. Um, you're not saying, and I, I don't think it is the case, that somehow or another uh, the uh, witnesses are uh, unique to these problems. The, uh, uh, whether it's child molestation, whether it's issues occasionally over matters of uh, shunning and so on. The, there are other churches that have certainly experienced uh, different issues along the line. So you're not saying that they're somehow uniquely uh, saddled with these particular problems, but you're saying neither are they uh, uh, 
uh, immune to those things yes. and that they uh, apparently have existed. And you, in your opinion, they have not aggressively no. dealt with that. Exactly. And that's very troubling to you. Exactly. Yeah. Seeing how aggressively they act toward what they call apostates mm -hmm. and compare that to how they act to, to people who are evidently sick emotionally, psychologically sick, right. um, as evidenced in their behavior many times, especially their sexual behavior. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So no, they, they are by no means unique. But I remember their distribution of a tract. In that tract, the tract's question was, is there a true religion? Something mm. like that. And among the disqualifying factors mentioned in that tract of being a false religion is mm. the condoning or being non-reactive to child molestation. Mm. And obviously the pictures they showed was, were, were, were pictures of the Roman Catholic Church. Wow, okay. <laughs> well, what applies to the one apl should apply to the other. Mm. Mm. And after discovering that they were just as non-reactive to many child molestation, 23,000 and counting child molestation cases. Those were only the ones reported, mm -hmm. even the non-reported ones. Mm -hmm. That was and this is according to, uh, who was the lady? Barbara the Anderson, the researcher. Barbara Anderson, yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Who uh, apparently was uh, sort of an inside person. Exactly, in the, and, that's, and that's, exactly, that's exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. um, someone from the outside has no right to do that. Mm -hmm. But someone from the inside certainly does. Yeah. yeah. So that was my exit. Yeah. That doesn't, That's I, I've not, I've, I haven't told you how I've, I've come to... Well, that's what I'm say. Let's do a little bit on the... Let's, let's, let me, let me uh, pose a question and we'll shift gears and go sure. that direction a little bit then. Uh, so uh, with, with the background that you've had, yeah. uh, now here you are, uh, a one God believer, uh, and uh, still a one God believer. Indeed. I believed in one God since I was little. <laughs> yeah, you, you never did give that up, did you? <laughs> and, uh, but you've made your way, and here you are now a, uh, a biblical one God believer, yeah. one uh, biblical Unitarian. Uh, how did you come to that, and how do you feel about all that now that sure. you're here? That's wonderful. Well, you spoke to it very wonderfully today. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. That was a hard talk. That yeah. was a hard talk. It was um, quite some specialized information, but that, um, I'm glad that it went off well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Psalm 110 and 1. Say better. Uh, that was great, and we'll, uh, for our viewers, we'll, we'll have that on our site. So you need to, uh, by all means, uh, keep that in mind, and we'll, we'll, we'll have it there for you. You need to take it in. But, uh, but tell us again, uh, what's the story about I certainly it? had some cleaning up to do yeah. after leaving. For the first time in my life, I felt like like a free man. Mm. More than a decade earlier, I felt like a man finally discovering the golden nugget of biblical truth. I sat with that golden nugget of biblical truth, but I was in a cage. Mm, mm. I finally, I finally felt, felt like a free man. Wow, that's nice. A free Christian. Mm. Obviously, certain issues had to be cleared up. I had to reinvent my mind, as it were according to the uh, first century model of Christianity. Mm, mm. I need to realize that there was, there was no such thing as an organization. Mm -hmm. Organism, yes. Mm -hmm. Christ's body is a body, it's an organism, it, it, mm. it develops, it, it's dynamic, it changes, it grows. Mm -hmm. Organism implies, to a certain level, also organization, else it would not be an, a, a live organism. Mm. But not the other way around. Organization does not necessarily imply organism. And far, and far too often, organization takes on human dimensions. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah. And, and a, a corporate hierarchy, mm. something foreign to the to the to the first century model. Mm. Mm. So that was something I, I wrestled with. I knew I knew the first century Christians were guided by Holy Spirit. They were organized by Holy Spirit, not wow. by not by human strategy or human invention but by Holy Spirit mm. and I wrestled with that and and reading reading around reading up and um, doing some personal Bible study as well I I sort of started to grasp it mm. that God is our organizer not humans Wow God by means of our King Christ Jesus mm. the King of the, the congregation and the Spirit making them present among us 
That is what organizes us. Mm. That was beautiful. That, that realization was good. Mm. I came across, um, or I, was, I had already been aware of certain dissenting Jehovah's Witness websites, mm. some very good material on there. And on one of them was also websites or, 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 or links to Biblical Unitarianism. Mm -hmm. Anthony Buzzard's site as well as oh, yes. the Kingdom Ready site. Oh, yes. Uh, Sean Finnegan. Yes. yes. Great. Stuff. I enjoyed, I enjoyed um, visiting those sites. Mm. But I had a problem. It was easy for me to accept, well, Jesus would come back. He would reign in Jerusalem. That was okay. That was good. It sounded good to me. It made sense to me. Mm -hmm. I had a problem with three things that I really had to sort out. The one thing was the bodily resurrection of Jesus. That Jesus was, re was resurrected, not like a spirit, not like, yeah, well, not a spirit, mm -hmm. but in a spiritual or an immortal body, it was still a soma, it was still a body. Right. Okay, okay. so that was the first thing. Well, let me ask you on that point now, is, the, is it uh, the view of uh, our witness friends that it's not a truly a no, he was he was he was resurrected like like an angel oh, that okay. he could materialize oh okay okay yeah. i see uh, so i think they're well as you have decided apparently they're, they're really misunderstanding yeah, that issue. Certainly. yeah sure and um they 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 deal with the dilemma of the missing body as god just to care of the body. He just made the body disappear. I see, yes. Whereas we now realize that that was the very body that was immortalized. Yes. Yeah. This, this mortal will put on immortality. Immortality, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and we as Christians would follow the same pattern. Yeah. The resurrection of the flesh yeah. would be in reaction to Jesus' mm -hmm. resurrection. Right. Yeah. That would, would be a similar image. Great. The other thing was um, no heavenly life. Okay. Well, I really never wanted to go to heaven anyway. <laughs> I realized that I, that I wasn't, yes. as a Jehovah's Witness, it, witness, it was inculcated. If you don't have that desire to go to heaven, you probably are not part of the 144,000 cl class going right. to heaven. So you'll remain here on earth. And my re reaction was, well, send them off to heaven. I want to stay You'd on love, earth. You'd you enjoy staying much. right here. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the other issue. Okay. With a with a uh, a wonderfully new and renewed earth. Uh, in, that was in fine. I understood kingdom, yeah. that. I understood that. Yeah. But for the royals also. Yeah. You see. Yeah. For that special class, I was still un under the impression that there was a two class system. Oh yes, of course. You know course. the invention okay. of Rutherford. Right. Yeah. The hundred and forty-four thousand. That's it. Okay. The two yes, classes. Course, yeah, two classes. Yeah. There was something um, 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 Russell never believed in, but Rutherford came in. He introduced all new kinds of stuff. That okay. I only later, I only na uh, with, with my research I found see. out all new kinds of stuff. Rutherford introduced, and I he see. was he was a very important man. Okay. So that I had to take care of, and the third thing was the non-personal pre-existence of Jesus. Ah yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but, but, well, I, I wasn't prepared to join any other religion anyway. Mm -hmm. So my approach was, you know what, just, just accept that we will, we will differ on issues, mm -hmm. as I will undoubtedly differ on certain issues with, with other Christians mm -hmm. that are also Unitarian of some kind, such as mm -hmm. the Christadelphians. Just accept that there will be differences and move on. Sure. Um, there, are, there are many there are certainly many more many more similarities upon which we can we can fellowship and we can build up each other and encourage each other than to 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 split hairs on differences so i was i was really relaxed about the whole issue the all those three issues wow but eventually now, you, let me again for the benefit of our viewers uh, when you say uh, the non-personal pre-existence of jesus yeah. explain that just for a moment what what that issue is about? What, what, what that means about? is when 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 the when, when the Bible says that Jesus was foreordained mm. to come to 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 appear as our Messiah, it does not mean that he pre-existed in person with God in in the heaven in some literal sense through, yes. in some literal sense yeah. and came through through Mary into ah, yes. into our our human sphere right. and then just returned to come back, pick us up, and return again. Um, it means that God had a plan, and that plan was so sure, it was so certain, 
that it was as if Jesus had already been there. Right. Just as in John 17, it is so sure that there will be people, Christians, being immortalized and ruling with Jesus, that Jesus could say, you already have that glory. Yes, yeah. yes. That's prolapsus. That, I, I even discovered that there was a, a sound theological doctrine around prolapsus. Ah, yes. The expectation. Um, Enoch, for instance, was quoted in, in Jude. It says, Yahweh came with, came with his myriads of angels, executing yes. um, judgment upon the wicked. Right. Well, 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 Enoch was alive. It had not happened. But it was so certain that mm. it was as yes. good as fulfilled. Uh, and that was the concept yeah. I had to cross. Yeah. Sometimes called a uh, prophetic present. I've heard. That's it. Yes, yes. That's it. In, in or the, eschatological reality. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Experiencing eschatology. Yeah. The, the now, prophet is able to speak of something that is yet future as though it was right before his eyes. Because of and, the certainty and, of it. Yeah, and, so, and because of its certainty and because sometimes by vision or prophecy it is before his eyes. Yeah. That, you know, it's John saying, I look and, and behold there was this beast and yeah. all of this. Well, most people would say that was future to John, certainly. I think. Yeah. And yet he's able to say, there it was. Yeah, uh, it, It's here, but, but no, it's actually in the future. Yeah. It's, no, it's not. So we discover then that with regard to Jesus, there is uh, this same sense of certainty, mm -hmm. foreknowledge in God's mm -hmm. plan and his work. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's as though Jesus is before the eyes of the prophets, and yet his literal existence was still to come in the future. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, Jesus good. had been in the mind of God before creation. Yes, yes. Certainly. Wonderful stuff. So by means of that, and by means of the whole plan, that if things would go wrong, Jesus would be there. Yeah, that's great. We could exp we, we understand that's why through that thought through that whole plan of God, God created the rest. Right. So, it made sense. Made and what I also d discovered was that it was no unique biblical Unitarian teaching, mm -hmm. as I came to learn when I was a, 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 a Jehovah's Witness. They 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 were teaching unique Watchtower teachings. Ah, yes. Yeah, no other group ever taught those teachings. Mm -hmm. Those were unique. Those were really inventions uh, belonging to the watchtower alone. I see. Mm -hmm. And I discovered, well, this ideal, non-personal, not, not, not personal, but ideal pre-existence of Jesus was, was nothing new. Mm -hmm. There were other uh, well-known scholars who also had that impression, who also taught that. Mm. So it was nothing you new. You realized this to be the case. Yes, that's yeah. right. That's correct. That was good. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that was like that was like independent confirmation. Right. Yeah. Yaku, uh, let me ask you this then, with regard to the things we've been saying, if you could say anything to uh, your your former associates yeah. uh, w uh, with the witnesses, and perhaps some who uh, maybe have disassociated with the witness, what would your word be to to the person out there? What would you say to the folks? Uh, okay. Maybe I should just clarify one thing. Sure. I'm not, I'm not implying that the true Christian congregation will be free of problems. Sure. I'm not implying that. What I'm saying is the cr true Christian congregation should be so free that if I encounter a problem and I can protect myself, I am able to separate myself from a, from a particular group. Mm -hmm. I am not forced to stick to a group and in the process harm myself, harm my spirituality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Wow. Sure. Mm -hmm. What I can say to Jehovah's Witnesses is that biblical Unitarianism is it's not a religion, it's not, it's not, it's not a church, it's a theology. Mm -hmm. And that is in effect what we want. The church is the body of Christ. We do not want to. We, want, we do, do not want to be, be, be um, impeded, or uh, we do not want to be crippled by by organizational procedure, by by man-made man-made laws and regulations. And that is unfortunately what's happened, not only to the JW organization, but also to to other religions. Sure. Biblical Unitarianism, the, within the context of free Christianity, 
is the solution mm. to the watchtower dilemmas. Wow. It wow. is the solution. Mm. On, minor, on minor issues, you're free to disagree. Mm -hmm. On essential issues, we agree upon anyway. Mm -hmm. And allowing God to, to, to work through me as an individual, not forever seeking the ap uh, approval of the structures that be, the authorities that be, mm -hmm. Um, for me to grow in a certain direction and then having them mold and guide me into that direction, predetermined direction. No, no, no. We as humans can grow within our potential as God blesses us mm. and, and, and injects, as it were, Holy Spirit within us, allowing us to grow in a direction as an, organiz as, as, as an organism mm -hmm. in a way that He wants us to grow and develop. And that is the kind of freedom every Christian should have. Right. The Jehovah's Witnesses included. Yeah, interesting. So, well, let me ask you this: uh, uh, seeing your your history and where you come uh, in your understanding, uh, would it be fair to say then, if you could encourage your fellow Jehovah's Witnesses or sometimes former Witnesses to uh, to consider uh, afresh? Uh, some of the uh, scriptural issues. Yeah. Uh, one would be uh, the the issues of organization that yeah, we were talking about, and the problems of, of organization. Uh, but also, then these three things that you've mentioned. Yeah, you would encourage them to reconsider those. Things. Most certainly, most certainly. There's there's such good 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 information, such good material out there mm -hmm. explaining that, and this is not new. Mm -hmm. This was indeed the Hebrew, the Jewish concept. Right. Of prolapse is the concept of everlasting life on earth as well as the concept of resurrection. Oh. Jesus had a typically Jewish resurrection. Huh. He was a Jew himself. Yes. And the Gospels were first proclaimed to Jews, mm -hmm. not, not, not Hellenistic Jews, right. but true Jews. So you're, you would encourage uh, your friends out there to reconsider this business about the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. Certainly. It's important. It's important to us. Yeah. And to him, it's important scripturally. Yeah. To uh, reconsider this business about a, a division yeah. between the people, some going off to heaven to live forever while others do not. Yeah. That's, in your view, something that everyone should reconsider that. Certainly. That's it. Certainly. And then uh, <clears throat> certainly the idea that Jesus was a literally pre-existent being before he came into existence in Mary. That, you think, really should be yeah. thought that's, about carefully. That's, yeah. a, that's a logical dilemma. Yeah. As much as we kick against the illogic construct of the Trinity, mm. we need to be consistent in our reasoning. We need to also kick against the illogic construction of this pre-existence. Ah, in other yes. words, he existed before he existed. Right. It's it's it, it doesn't it doesn't add up. Logically, it doesn't add up. Yahoo! Thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. It's Certainly. wonderful. Thank you. Uh, great truths and understanding that you've come to, and uh, you're speaking the truths about the one God wonderfully and about His human Son Jesus. I love it. It's, it's great stuff. Look forward to uh, to working with you over time and uh, seeing you again and hearing more from you and uh, and having you more uh, on our 21st century side. So Thank you very much. Great, it's indeed. An honor. Well, thanks again. So nice to see you.